Hello, grade 11 biology class. Welcome back to another uh, lecture. This is a brand new uh, unit. This one's titled Immunity. Uh, essentially, it's all about your immune system. Uh, very, very important nowadays. So, um, yeah, let's get into the first lesson a little bit. First lesson is titled The Three Lines of Defense, Part 1. Um, and the reason that we are doing it in two parts is because there are three lines of defense, so it takes a little bit uh, of time to get through. You'll see that uh, the first two lines are what we're going to talk about today by our key points. So key point one is first line, key point three is the second line, in between we have PPE, personal protective equipment, and four, phagocytosis. Um, so yeah, let's do it. So the three lines of defense are very cleverly named, the first line, the second line, and the third line. So that's kind of how I'll be referring to them from now on. Um, and one other thing that we want to define before we get into this is that uh, previously we had been talking about antigens as markers on red blood cells. Uh, and they are antigens. But overall, antigens are things that can be recognized by the immune system. So those antigens were recognized by antibodies Antibodies are part of our immune system. So uh, antigens will now refer to essentially foreign invaders, bacteria, viruses, things that shouldn't be in uh, your bloodstream that are. Those are now antigens. Just like, you know, antigens on red blood cells that are in your blood. Um, they can be recognized by the immune system if you have the antibodies. They're the same kind of idea. So the first line. Uh, the first line of defense are things that prevent invaders or antigens from getting into your body. So uh, hair, eyelashes, uh, hair in your nose, uh, in your respiratory tract, uh, the cilia, uh, skin, which covers most of your body, prevents uh, antigens from getting in. It, within your digestive tract, you have saliva that will dissolve things and dilute things from getting into the rest of your body. You have acids in your stomach to kill those things. In your respiratory tract, you have mucus to capture it and cilia to push it back out. So the first line of defense is anything that you can think of that would stop uh, an antigen from getting into your body and infecting you in the first place. Uh, if you have a tear in your skin like this young lad, uh, then that is a break in the first line of defense and you might get an infection there. Uh, you know, you need to clean wounds uh, and cover them to make sure that they don't get dirty and get infected. This is the whole idea behind the first line of defense. Stops things from getting in. Personal protective equipment or PPE, uh, like a lot of us are wearing, you know, in class now, uh, is things that enhance your first line of defense. So personal prote protective equipment or PPE is like adding a layer before your first line of defense. Could be masks, which we're all used to wearing now, goggles, face shields, gloves, gowns, hand sanitizer, anything that you do that stops um, the uh, an antigen from getting into your body is personal protective equipment and enhances your first line of defense. Uh, there are some professions where you need to do a whole bunch of it. There are some where you only need to do a few, some where you need to do none. Um, so yeah, uh, depends on what kind of work you're doing. Our second line of defense, which is P.3 already, is what's known as the inflammatory response. So it is an increase in blood flow to the site of an infection. The increase in blood flow will result in that area becoming swollen. It might become warm, uh, red. So if you have a sore throat, for example, that is uh, an inflammatory response. And the reason your throat may become inflamed is because you have tonsils there, uh, and that might be where the infection is taking hold. So uh, blood flows to that area. It becomes swollen and warm and red and sore. Uh, the whole idea is that it is flooding blood to the area, so it can, um, we'll talk about it next, but carry things there that will help fix this. So 
uh, runny nose. If you have a warm, uh, swollen uh, nose inside, it's going to become runny. Your eyes may become watery. You may have a fever. Uh, these are early signs of infection. It might be bacteria, it might be a virus, uh, but some kind of antigen has entered your body and you are fighting it off with your second line of defense. Uh, so again, inflammatory response is an important term to remember. So the purpose of the inflammatory response is to bring these leukocytes or macrophages. So white blood cells are leukocytes. They're broken up into many different kinds, but macrophages is one major type. Uh, so a type of leukocyte called macrophages consume the invader in a process called phagocytosis. So essentially, the inflammatory response brings a lot of blood to an area and therefore a lot of macrophages head to that area. Um, these macrophages are nonspecific, so that means that they'll consume a lot more than just the invader, but if you have a lot of them around, they're likely to encounter that antigen and consume it. And again, the process by which they do this is phagocytosis. So that is key point four, and we'll talk about that quite a bit coming up. Um, so the purpose of uh, the second line of defense is to eliminate the initial cause of the cell injury. It is to, um, you know, like the, the antigen has kind of set up a base, and now you are just like flooding it with everything you have to try to contain it and kill all the antigens that you can through phagocytosis. So macrophages are uh, the important white blood cell that does this process. So what is this process? Uh, it is a major method used to eliminate and remove pathogens and cell debris. So even if a cell dies, uh, a macrophage will come along and digest it using phagocytosis. Essentially, the macrophage, and I believe we have a picture. Yes, the macrophage. So this would be the macrophage. This entire thing is the macrophage. The macrophage uses its membrane to engulf the antigen. This right here, what they call the food particle, would be the antigen right here. So it is engulfing it. You can see in the second picture, it has com almost completely closed it off. And in the third, it has completely closed it off. So it has engulfed the antigen. The antigen is then destroyed and digested. Um, we're, you're going to go into a lot more detail about this. Um, because it is a very complex process, but you can refer back to this diagram at any time. Uh, so the antigen could be bacteria, it could be viruses, could be dead tissue, could be many other things. Uh, sometimes, since the macrophage is so large, the macrophage uh, will live, but sometimes it will die. Um, if it dies, it spends all its energy. It will be filtered out by the liver, the spleen, and eventually by the kidneys. So it might be digested in the liver and spleen, and then its proteins uh, will be excreted by the kidneys in the form of urea. So again, we have it engulfing it, we have it completely engulfed, and then we have it digesting that food particle right there. So comes up to it, surrounds it, completely surrounds it, and then digest it, digests it. Uh, I'd like you to take a look at this video. It's pretty interesting. There's a white blood cell that chases a little bacteria around on a petri dish, you can actually see it moving and it chasing it as it detects it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, here we go. So the process, the, mag, uh, the macrophage engulfs the antigen and creates a vacuole, which is a space around the antigen. So that is right here. This vacuole is the space around the antigen. And then these things, these green things, are lysosomes. So the lysosomes are little pouches that are full of digestive enzymes. And these digestive enzymes um, fuse at the vacuole and release their contents and then they will eat it all up. Uh, so that is what does the actual digesting in phagocytosis. Uh, the antigen is then digested and is no longer a threat. The macrophage may live uh, and may die, as we had mentioned before. So lysosomes do the actual digesting after it has been surrounded. And it becomes almost nothing uh, and it can sometimes repeat the set call. So what I'd like you to do is read the information that's given there and I believe it's to put it, most of it in your own words. 
uh, it's important to be able to read the part and kind of condense it, make it make sense to you. And if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Uh, thanks very much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it, and I will see you soon.